Right, morning everyone. Um, grab yourself a weight. Uh, I've got about eight kilos. There's a, there's a kettlebell. Dumbbell works fine. Um, today's session we're going to do uh, a load of mobility to get moving, a bit of work on the hamstrings, usual stuff you've seen before. Then we're going to do something totally different. We're going to do some uh, controlled articulated rotations, which is cars. If my athletes might know this from earlier in the winter, we were doing it from a swim development point of view. Do some stuff on the hips with that as well. Then we're going to do uh, a bit of core work for the bike and then go back to uh, a few sets of prone YTWs for the swim and then have a decent stretch out at the end been a fairly tough week I reckon for most people so far so uh, nothing too heavy today more just focused on good quality range of movement um, so we start as ever um, some neck circles just nice big circles go both ways I feel I'm really tight in one side of my neck already Take your head in your hand and just stretch the neck out one side. Keep the shoulder low. Same on the other side. Okay, uh, arm circles, two arms together. Stay really loose in the body. Just let the arms warm up. This is going to be quite important for today. We're going to do a couple of minutes of this because when we get onto the the articulated rotations we need the shoulders all nice and loose we go forwards we go backwards I'm going to go forwards again and backwards again Going to go across the body, swapping which hand is highest each time you come across. Just keep this moving. Okay, we're going to go back to backward circles. Like I said, doing a bit more of this than normal, make sure we're really warm in the shoulders. Forwards. And then stop and do some shoulder circles going backwards. Really try and like move the shoulder and the scapula. Big flat bone on the. That's it. Look back. Going backwards here. Going to go forwards now. Really try and lift through, open everything up. Okay, good. Go to the other end of the body, get some foot circles. One foot, six or eight circles one way. Nice big, don't rush them, take your time, get good movement. Back the other way. Good to loosen up if you've been running hard this week. Very good, swap feet. might notice like the movement isn't quite as circular in one foot as the other. Keep the keep it a good speed and quite purposeful. Okay, good. You might need to hold on to something for this or you can do it stood still on your own. This is another one that's important for when we get onto the rotations. We're just going to open the hips. So you're coming up in front first, move out to the side. Keep it really relaxed while we're doing this. This is just to get the joint moving. Keep the toes pointed upwards as you do these, just with form. And then go back the other way from the back. 
out to the side first and step round. On the other side. Everything's crunching in this hip for me. So. Try and just keep the body pointed forwards, make the make the leg do the movement in the joint. And whether you need to hold on to something or not for this, we just do some leg swings. Keep it really relaxed. Don't don't arch the back when you do it. Only go as far as the leg wants to move. Swap sides. Rattling through this because the the uh, cars work will take us a little bit of time. Uh, down to your mat, um, into Spider-Man position. We always do. So uh, today we'll just go straight into uh, dropping the elbow in and letting the leg move and open the body. Keep that rear leg up nice and high behind you. Take your time, get the, make sure you just really feel the hips opening. Good rotation in the back. Okay, and we'll swap sides. About 10 of these done. Okay, good. We'll go onto our backs. We just do some um, knees to 90 degrees. Uh, drop the legs out to the side, just get the lower back moving. Keep the core engaged. Keep the lower back flat on the floor. Just control the movement, but keep it moving. Shoulders down. Keep going with that a second. Realize I'd rather, oh no, I had to. Luckily I did press record, that was lucky, wasn't it? Um, Okay, come up to sitting. We we'll do some Z sits. So as straight a back as you can manage. We go put the legs to one side in Z position. And you're just gonna roll them out to the side, keeping the back as tall and straight as you can. Again, get the, the upper leg, the femur moving in that hip joint. Stay relaxed, breathe through it. And just, just feel good movement in the joint there. Do a little bit of work on the hamstrings quickly before we move on to like main set for the day. That moving. 
Okay, good. Go into like box position here. Walk yourself up just to the point that you feel a little stretch in the calves. You put the heels flat on the floor. Just walk through the calves. Bring the hands in a little further. Put, bring yourself up to standing from there. We'll do some um, three-way hamstring stretch. Most of you know it now. It's feet pointing forwards. Don't go all, you don't have to touch the feet. You just go as low as you can to start. Feet out to the side. Feet turn into the middle. And just keep repeating that. Stay relaxed into it. You're just going straight down. Your hamstrings will just loosen as you go. I just touched my toes for the first time today then. Keep changing the foot position. Some are more tight than others. Feel free to just do more in that position. Anyone that's new to this, we sort of rattle through this fairly quick. As you do the exercises week on week, you, you just get to know them. By not over explaining them all, you just get us through more on a Friday morning before everyone goes to work. Keep moving with this one for a minute. Certainly getting more length in the hamstrings now. Last one. Good. And then we'll just do some straight leg hamstring kick. So arms out to the front. You're going to bring the leg up just as high as it wants to go, but straight. And you're going same foot to same hand at the moment. Don't overdo it. Keep the leg straight. Just look into mobilize those hamstrings try and stand tall as you do it keep it moving and then just go opposite foot opposite hand or actually slightly wider if you like Okay, good. You're pretty warmed up now. Grab yourself a drink. So, I'm going to move on to what are called controlled articulated rotations. And the key here is that you don't rush anything and you really try and feel great movement. It's about putting your the movement right to the end of the range of what you can do and controlling that movement at that point. So this will be very different for everyone. So we'll start with a couple of really simple ones. The first three are swim related. The last one is run related. Um, so uh, I think with us all thinking about getting back in the pool, hopefully in the next few weeks, this is good timing. Uh, it's gonna change my camera angle a touch. Okay, I'm going to stay fairly close to the camera to start showing you these. So the first one, arm out to the side. What you want to imagine is that you've got, um, imagine having like a, a, an X drawn on your bicep. So to make sure that the movement is done well, the upper arm is staying still but the, and the bicep is fully rotating. And what we're doing is we, we're going to keep the body really still. You're trying to keep the upper arm fairly still as well. Don't let that don't let that move anywhere. And you're rotating as round as far. See the way my shoulders just come forward there. That's not good. We want to just make the muscles that create this movement do the work. So this is actually coming from like rotator cuff. And then we go back round to full extension. And really focus on which muscles in the shoulder enable you to make this movement. 
and make them work. It's a slow, controlled rotation right to the end of your range of movement without moving the body in a way that assists. This is a really simple one to start with, but if you're, if you're doing it in a strong enough manner, it gets quite tiring. Really get those shoulder muscles working. Try and keep that upper arm still. It's quite easy for me with the camera on to see the mistakes I'm making. You could maybe put your camera on, double click on your picture, it'll make you the main person on your screen. Watch yourself. I can really feel those shoulder muscles working. Do a swap to the other side. These two are really acting as warm up for the, the third one we're gonna do. Try and keep that upper arm still. Keep the body relaxed. Find the maximum range of motion. You feel some good crunching going on in the shoulder joint. These obviously feel, you know, relative to lifting weights and stuff. This set feels like easy stuff, but you know, being able to simply get your arm in these positions for swimming is pretty important. Really make those, really focus on those shoulder muscles, even like picture the muscles in the shoulder joint working to rotate the arm and be strong with them. Okay, so we'll move out to, we'll do this both armed at the same time. So this is arms right out to the side. And again, it's this, it's the rotation of the bicep. So we, we're rotating the hands to full extension in the joint and make these shoulder muscles control it. You have to nearly like make the brain and the shoulder muscles like connect, really control it. After a few of these, you start to really feel the shoulders working. Full range of motion, like you can nearly like push to the end of the range of motion here. Like really trying to just get an extra few millimeters of hand turn out. Control it, keep the arms really horizontal to the floor. about getting my hands like totally up right now so it's like the, the the upper arm moving in the shoulder joint okay good so we move on to a more difficult one now this is a little this is those two were just the precursor for this one so think think swimming backstroke to start with we're going to take the arm watch what's above you you're going to bring it up with the hand facing inwards which is this is the easy part that's no problem we can all do this when you get to the top you turn the hand outwards so you feel that rotation and you're going to not twist the body in any way you're going to just move the arm through the rear range of motion try and keep that body nice and relaxed and forward and the key here is it's not just about getting the hand to here. You have to use the muscles in the back, in your back to control the arm on the way back. And then bring it round. And then when you reach the bottom, turn the hand out again and you're gonna go back. So use those muscles in the back, really focus on them. It's a controlled movement at the end of your range of motion. And we're going up, control it. Try not to twist the body too much. When you get to the top, you can turn the hand and you can come back round the front, down, and we go back again. 
Turn the hand at the top. Feel those muscles in the, in the back of the shoulder. Contract, let them pull the arm around the back. Hand is facing outwards and bring it into the side and just keep that motion moving. It's a hard one, you've got to make, make the muscles in the back do the work to control the arm. And anyone that's not been doing like cords or anything regular, this is really good for just getting these muscles strong again for swimming. You go up, turn the hand out, control it backwards. Do two more this side. Turn the hand. We got, I did this with a lot of athletes earlier in the year, like range of motion, which was a big limiter for a lot of non lifetime or, you know, top end swimmers. Whenever I watch swimmers in the pool and that they've got a swim weakness, I always just see lack of like range of motion in the shoulder joint. And a lot of the guys that did this were really seeing their swim move on or just their range of motion really improve. Okay, we bring that round the front. Other side. To remember to turn the hand out at the top. Control it on the way back, especially as this is the first one on this arm. Go back. Keep that body nice and relaxed. Make the muscle do the work in the back. Turn the hand out at the top. Do three more of these. to turn my hand on that one. Don't make that mistake. Control it. I can see my arm drifting out to the side of it more than it needs to make those muscles work. Put the hand back in. I'll adjust my camera. You guys do one more while I'm doing that. Okay, so back to whatever you were holding on to earlier to do the hip openers. This is very similar. Uh, it's a controlled articulated rotate, rotation of the hip. Really good for like extending range of motion here. And it's, it's pretty much what we were doing earlier. So it's this time, however, we bring the knee up. You really feel like hip flexor at work to bring the knee to its maximum active height. You're gonna take the knee out to the side, really focusing on holding it as high as possible. Keep the body relaxed, keep it going. You'll reach maximum range of motion here. You turn the foot sideways as I'm doing now, you'll feel the glute really engage here to rotate, but again, keep it as high as possible and keep taking it backwards, keeping it high, like fight to keep it up the whole way back. Turn the leg. So we're now in this position and go down. And then we go back the other way. So you come up, maximum range of motion of extension. Then we start going out as we bring it round, really make the muscles work, keep it as high as possible. You've got the leg horizontal at this point. Then rotate through, get that hip flexor working again. And back round. 
up with the hip flexor, start taking it out. The body should remain forward the whole time. That's what creates the end of the range. When you, when you reach that end of range sideways, body forward. Obviously, just, I'm having to look at the camera a few times here. And then go to the backwards position all the time, just trying to stay at the biggest, the biggest circle you can possibly do with the hip. Through, get the hip flexor on. We do a few more of these. It gets quite hard work if you're really squeezing the muscles. Have the core switched on for this as well. Really. It all through. Last one this side. Hip flexor on. End the range of motion. Foot sideways. Keep it high. Keep it high. Through to the back and down. And we bring it back through once more to finish. Up. Hip extension. Glutes working really as high as you can. Bring it round. Okay, good. So we go to the other side. Start with the hip flexor. Take it out. Then the range of motion. I'm definitely more restricted on this side. I'm down. You should notice you get like bigger circles as we go through this. Take your time. It's more about the quality than, than the speed. Keep those muscles working. high, start to really fight to keep it up, oh, should be feeling like the burn through, through the glute, glute mead as you go out to the side so that your glute is higher to the hip bone, bring it through, switches to the hip flexor in the front, one more rotation this side, out, foot back, control it, really squeeze. And back through. Good, down. So that's controlled articulated rotations for you. Uh, grab your weight. After doing that to the hips, we'll just do something that opens them up nicely with a bit of resistance. Uh, heartbeats that we do every week, just because I like them, because it opens my hips. Um, down in squat position. So side on, it's here, nice straight back. Down, push forward like a heartbeat, back up. The kettlebell is your heart pounding out your chest. Just keep this one moving. Sit nice and deep into it, heels on the floor. Nice straight back. 10 of these. Okay, good. Uh, and then as promised, we just try something from a, a bike position point of view. 
those with time trial bikes, aero positions. Quite a good one. Stolen from Alex Dowsett, the British cyclist. Uh, so we're going to go into plank. Normal, ordinary plank. You're going to raise your hands slightly if you can onto your elbows, a little bit of an aero position. And what you're going to do here is you're going to record, it's called a saw. You're going to very quickly extend all the way back and then you're going to slowly walk your feet back to your aero position and hold and then extend right back. To move back really quick, back to the aero position and then walk yourself back up, staying really strong in the core. Really low with the head and then come back to your aero position. Pretty hard this. Especially if your mat slips like that. Four more. Walk it back in. Pause if you need to. Out quickly. Walk it back in. Two more. Walk it back up. One more. And walk back up. Good. I'll give you a second to catch up there. Just one more exercise today. We do some stretching. Most of you know this now. This is a prone YTW. So having done the cars and the mobility, we've got shoulders and well fired up today. Uh, so you should be able to execute this quite well now. So this is um, head facing straight down. I'm going to demonstrate talking to the camera. So ignore my head looking forwards. The head is straight down on the mat. Thumb, the important bit is thumbs are always up to the ceiling. You raise the thumbs. We go out to the Y position. You come back to the T position, squeezing into the back and then really squeeze in to W. Forward and down. Raise up to Y, bring it round to T, really control it. This is, this is actually like a step on from the controlled articulated rotation. You're really controlling it with the muscles in the back. Y, T, squeeze into W and then hold it forward again. And down. We're going really to try and do 10 of these today. It's quite challenging if you're right at the end of the range of motion. W. And forward and rest. Up to Y. T. Into W. And forward. Keep. Keep hold of it all the way to the recovery. Up to Y. T. Squeeze in at the back. Squeeze, hold it. Extend forward, still squeeze. And down. T. W. Keep. Keep those shoulders working all the way forward. Look for keeping good height with your hands. A couple more. Up 
on the W. Think about like drawing the shoulder blades back and down. The squeeze of E on the T, back and down on the W. And then control the motion forward. Good stuff, guys. So uh, we'll just finish with some stretching. Uh, hip flexor first while I'm on my knees, literally. Uh, we just um, keep the pelvis pushed forward this direction. Most of you know this stretch by now. Don't let it tilt back. It's about it being forward. Arm straight up if you need it for a bit of extra stretch to the front. And I think today we'll we'll pulse with the pulse with the glute. So pulse forward, as in push the hip forward. Nice little movement. Just pulse about ten pulses. You just feel it through the front. Tighten up. Keep reaching up. Keeping this pelvis push forward. Take your foot and your hand behind you. And just get a stretch to the quad. Don't let that pelvis tip back, keep it forward. Makes it much harder to get the heel into the bum. It's got a light stretch, you just breathe through it and you'll probably find you get the heel a little closer in in a second. Keep pushing the pelvis forward, bring that heel in a little more, relax. Okay, good, swap sides, hip flexor on the other side, arm up, pelvis forward, just pulse with the glute, just feel a nice little stretch through the hip. Good, go into the quad stretch at the back. One hand, two hands, whatever you can do. Pelvis forward. Just relax in. Don't force it, just let the heel slowly come into the bum a bit more. Stay on your knees a second. Just take the arm across the body, other arm around it. Just stretch the shoulder out. Pull it in nice and tight. Feel that through like the deltoid or lower deltoid. Other side. Okay, good, just roll onto your back. <sighs> Keep it fairly simple this morning. Um, take your right foot, put it over your left knee, reach through with both hands underneath the left knee, pull this into the body, pushing the right knee away from you the whole time. Nice and relaxed. Just start to bring it in closer to you. you. Might feel this in the glute, you might feel it in the upper hamstring. Keep bringing it in, you should just feel yourself be able to get this in closer now. It's the last stretch of the day, so we'll make it a good one. 
keep pushing the, the, the right knee away from you. Open the hip joint. And actually on the right leg, if you bring the toes up towards the knee more, sometimes this also helps. Lots of little, little movements you can make on this one to just work on your own tight spots. Swap sides, other way. Hands through. And just start pulling this in. So you're pulling the knee that you're holding, you're pulling into the body. The other knee, you're actually trying to push away from you. More as we go on. Think about what's tight for you and just move the stretch to your own benefit. For me, it's definitely upper hamstring today. And just keep bringing it in. You'll notice you're quite a bit further in than when you started now. A few more seconds and we're done. Right, guys, hope that set you up for a Friday. Certainly loosened me up. Enjoy the rest of your easy day if that's what you're on today. That's great, Phil. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank you.